Right, before we get to the uh, main point of this video, there's a few static frames which are taken from the video itself. Now I'd normally try and use a stills camera for these, but every time I went to pick it up I got an electric shock off of it. It's got a, a metal on the casing. Now we're putting that down to the Coils RF field being contained within this building because it actually it's a bunker which was built to shield strike aircraft from the um, EMP, electromagnetic pulse that you get after an atomic bomb blast. So while it's pretty good at keeping the EMP out, it's also pretty good at keeping the coils RF energy inside with us, hence us getting the shocks. This is actually my friend's 12 inch coil that we're here, we're running between us. A bit more tweaking with it yet, tune in, phase and final size, a good one. The final capacitance size. But we're already, um, we're very impressed with this performance and it's breaking some records. Now we've started off on a low power setting, mainly because the safety gap is probably set a little bit too close and it has got a habit of firing. So what we did was, after we ran it, we measured various strike points um, as accurately as we could and, and a lot of these were about 8 to 10 feet and several managed 12 foot, which is actually a single coil record for the UK. With a 100 BPS coil, I always like the way that the streamers have the appearance of not being in a hurry and they seem to wander around as opposed to my 200 BPS coil where they seem to punch the air more. I like the rasp of this coil. This, this 100 BPS seems to have more of a rasp. My, um, my 200 BPS has more of a drone to it. Now, it's, it's, it can be a bit repetitious after a while, whereas this always seems to get portrayed power to me, the sound of it seemed to portray more in the way of power. But um, as you can see here looking at this, we ideally really do need a bigger toy. What we want is just one single streamer rather than the multiple ones we're seeing here. This toy by the way is 50 by 11. Now when we take the same toy using the same HV power supply, a pig, same ballast, same variac, same settings on everything and put all that onto my 8 inch coil that generally produces a streamer with less branches so it seems that of the two coils this 12 inch here is producing the higher top bolts because it seems to manage multiple breakouts easier than what my 8 inch is of course the problem is this is wasting energy ideally we'd like to uh, put all these multiple streamers and concentrate it into one big thick single streamer get get the power the length of the streamer from that now whether the higher voltage is down to coil geometry this is 1200 My, sorry this is 12 inch mine's 8 inch or it could be down to the fact that this is 100 bps mine's 200 bps this gives us the opportunity with this one to get the cap voltage much higher if you set the phase at just at the right spot. Now that metal grid that's just hit by the way that's normally used at other venues to protect the floor in. We have had cases where the streamers have hit the floor and damaged the floor in. It's, it's quite surprising just how much power is in one of these things. The next toroid we're, we're hoping to build is going to be um, ring toroid. We've got the hoops or the rings made and we just need to get it all constructed now. Now for those of you who aren't too sure what I'm talking about with the hoop toy, I'll leave a link in the um, description to uh, a video of the CAD that I made. We made a CAD drawing of it, drawn to perspective. And the idea was to give us the size of what it was actually going to look like in, on the end product. Now I think we're, that's the safety gone again. I think we're coming up to the end of it here. So don't forget if you liked it give it a thumbs up and it's goodbye from me and also goodbye from these two.